the mandate of IBA is to support and coordinate the sustainable utilization of animal resources in order to enhance food and nutrition security for EU member states. And uh, very recently, the mandate of uh, IBA has evolved to include blue economy. Uh, well, this, I believe, is in recognition of the leadership role uh, played by IBA in the formulation of the blue economy strategy. Africa has six to seven large marine ecosystems. In each of these large marine ecosystems, there are significant number of aquatic biodiversity. And each of them it provides significant opportunities for food security, for economic growth, for social action. We uh, at AU IBA try to strengthen the institutional capacity, the policy environment and regulatory framework for uh, in the African countries to tap into the aquatic uh, biodiversity resources. Uh, the African Blue Economy Strategy has a vision to transform the African continent through the blue economy resources for the sustainable transformation and growth of the African continent. The African Blue Economy Strategy has five main thematic areas fisheries and aquaculture, and conservation of aquatic ecosystem, shipping, maritime transport, trade, safety, and enforcement, coastal and marine tourism, environmental sustainability, sustainable energy, mineral resources, exploitation, and innovative industry. But finally, there is a cross-cutting one, what we call governance. Blue carbon, it means the potential of the coastal vegetative ecosystems to store and absorb the carbon from the atmosphere. It's the carbon captured by coastal wetlands. That is mangrove, sea grasses, salt marshes, and even the open ocean. Mangroves are able to sequester up to five times more carbon than terrestrial forests, and they're able to store it up to a meter deep within the sediments. These critical forests are of enormous benefit for both nature and people. First and foremost, they say mangroves are habitat. They're habitat for fish. When we look at the entire community lifestyle, their main source of income is fishing activities. 80% of commercial fisheries in the tropics will depend one way or another on mangrove because mangrove is the home for fish. If the mangroves were all to be wiped out, the economic status would be very, very low. Mangroves are very important ecosystems in terms of shoreline protection, fisheries, uh, and also the physical goods uh, that they provide, such as timber and construction uh, poles. So Mko Pamoja is Swahili word for uh, mangroves together. Uh, so Mko Pamoja is basically a community-based initiative, the first one in the world to conserve mangroves through the sale of carbon credits. Mko Pamoja is living in harmony with mangrove. And one way of living with harmony with mangrove is to support community livelihood as well as with mangrove, to support mangrove for biodiversity conservation and of course the climate action. Gazi Bay is one of the most uh, researched and studied area in the world. So it was through this research that the potential of mangroves in terms of carbon sequestration uh, came about. So what Bikoko Pamoja is doing, it is supporting restoration of mangrove through the sales of carbon credit. So what we do here is uh, total uh, avoided deforestation. Uh, that means no harvesting at all. And then we also restore uh, the degraded areas, planting about 2,000 seedlings every year. Mko Pamuja is a verified by plant vivo to sell 3,000 tons of carbon in the voluntary carbon market. So the community is able to earn up to 50 to 60,000 US dollars per year. That money is pumped direct to the community. The community uses that money to run some uh, small development projects like education, water and sanitation. And those communities, their role is basically to restore the mangroves, but they are also supporting them in terms of uh, growing 
the woods that they use for, for fuel, for their household uh, activities, as well as maintaining the general uh, ecosystems. Even mangrove planting itself is a livelihood option because the community are able to create jobs for them to establish nurseries, to restore the forest, and also to maintain those newly planted forests. Communities have lived with mangrove and they have coexisted for millions of years. One of the key tools that we use as a project is the participatory approach. So throughout the project implementation, we, we involve the community through trainings on how they are to conduct uh, restoration, on how they are to, to conserve their own forest, and also on how they are to manage their own resources. The other activity that we look at is uh, the restoration of the degraded mangroves. This is done through planting of mangrove trees, mangrove seedlings, and also through hydrological process whereby we breach out dikes to allow free flow of water within the entire mangrove ecosystem. We normally go to the forest and looking for that seedling, we collect them and go to plant. And when we sell the carbon credit, we normally share the profits. It is important uh, that they know how to live sustainably with these mangroves. So they're using them at the same time, but they are conserving them. We are very, very, very proud to say we are protecting them. That's our main work, to protect and conserve the mangrove forest. These are small actions that we are doing here. We are conserving a very little acreage, but uh, the benefits, they go beyond uh, our country borders. We've seen a lot of benefits from the project. Not only the direct benefits, that is in terms of uh, enhanced fish productivity, but we are also looking at the uh, natural status of the forest. And when we also look at the climatical impact, Coastal communities normally go to the dried mangroves. They normally sell those wood for fuel. So the project of supporting their alternative livelihoods is encouraging them to grow other type of tree that they can use for fuel. We want to continue training the community on community-based restoration. Apart from that, um, we want to plant uh, fruit growing trees in the local schools and also um, fast growing trees. We'll be bringing in the education because mangrove doesn't live alone. Mangrove communicate with the open ocean, seagrass and corals. So under uh, AU IBA, we'll be able to enhance the ecosystem-based management to fisheries, ecosystem-based management to seagrasses, to mangrove, and that one you have sustainable coastal development. Uh, it is estimated that Africa is losing 10 billion US dollars annually through illegal fishing. For many years, West Africa has been a hotspot for not only IUU fishing, but also for fisheries crimes. One third of landings are, are caught illegally. Fish is important because it represents a very large part of the nutrition in West Africa. It helps also alleviate poverty, ensure food security, and sustain their livelihoods as well. Illegal, unreported, and regulated fishing is endangering all the efforts made to ensure a sustainable management of those resources. Fishing vessels that use unauthorized gear are destroying the ecosystem. They catch juveniles and the level of bycatch are way more than what is authorized in legislations. One country cannot fight illegal fishing, so that's the reason why the, what we call the West Africa Task Force came together to combat those problems. The CPC is an organization sous-regional. Its role est de promouvoir et d'harmoniser la pêche et les réglementations dans la zone CPCE qui regroupe les six pays. Aussi, le CPCO intervient dans le domaine de la pêche légale. Depuis des années, des décennies, nous sommes face à la raréfaction des ressources. RMCSC is the Regional Monitoring, Control and Surveillance Center, monitoring territorial waters of all six member states. 
belonging to the FCWC. The center is equipped with technology that help track all the fishing vessels that are operating in the six member countries. We look out for vessels with suspicious activity, IUU vessels, and then provide intelligence to the right organizations that are responsible to take action. It is based mainly on routines and uh, checking of uh, fishing vessel patterns. The more you, you, you monitor them, the more you know their patterns, the more you know about their activities, the more you know about when and where they are not fishing. And based on all those informations, we are able to connect the dots. So intelligence reports uh, gathered during uh, suspicious activity detection is shared with um, the member states and then the Navy or the enforcement unit of that country takes action. The center provides only the intelligence and is up now to the country to take an action, whether it's to deny port access or to, to deny a license or even to deny registration to the vessel. Definitely, now there are significant reduction of some of the infractions that we used to see in the region. A vessel cannot come in the region now and use another vessel's identity because we know the vessels that are operating in the region. Since the establishment of the center, there is a significant reduction of some of the activities that we used to see in the region. What we can say confidently is that things have largely improved in the region. In each of these MCS center operation, the focus has been on deterring illegal fishing practices. But also there is a need to expand their scope to protect the wider ecosystem and the biodiversity. AUIBA is trying to collaborate with these, with these centers in order to expand their scope for environmental protection and ecosystem.